Hey guys, SaxDude26 here. I'm Attorney Neek. Hey there guys, I am Sonic Ghost. And I'm Matt from SLP Adventures. And I want to say it's been about eight to nine years uh, since we've recorded a game from this franchise. But finally, <laughs> we're getting on to another game in the Bomberman series. In particular, Bomberman DS. Has it that old? One of the many remakes existing of the original Bomberman. You didn't tell me this was Funko Pop edition though, why they all look the same? <laughs> I mean, Bomberman's head is a square, sometimes. Except for when it's a circle! I mean, so more. So yes, Bomberman DS is a from the ground up remake of the original Bomberman 1 for NES. Oh my gosh. I knew that they'd make this game and hey, you can tell this was before Konami bought <laughs> Hudson Soft or Hudson Soft 100 because Ubisoft made this game it looks like. Correct. And this is actually the second time they've done a remake of Bomberman 1. The first time they did it was for the TurboGrafx-16, and the DS version is actually a further remake of that. So, this is, in my honest opinion, one of the definitive ways to enjoy the original Bomberman. And literally, first level. Classic enemies, classic kind of layout, but with a little bit of quirkiness going on on the bottom screen, because every item you pick up is actually added to an inventory that you can control as you go. So you actually have the option to make the game intentionally harder on yourself by not spamming items when you pick them up. I mean, that's also a good thing, because there are certain items that you, you just try to avoid at times. There are just some items that are harder to use, and being able to turn them on and off is really nice. Absolutely, and definitely it is one of the strengths the Bomberman DS has, is that you get given power-ups quite frequently in levels. Um, for example, in the NES version of Bomberman 1, you would only get one per stage. Instances. And you have the option to just click on it on the bottom screen to add it to your um, your overall arsenal. And since this is Bomberman 1 only plays one bomb at a time? Well, until we get more bombs, but yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, how Bomberman games always work is that you always start out with nothing, so you have only one bomb and a very small blast radius, and the more powers you collect, the more bombs you collect, the more bombs you could drop, the more fire you get, the bigger your flames are, the more skate wheels you get, as the icon looks like, the faster you move. So it's all based on what you collect, so it can be random depending on what kind of map you have and how good or bad you are at the game. Yeah, which... To be fair for me, I I don't pretend to be good at Bomberman, I love it to death, but <laughs> as you're going to see as we keep going on, I have a couple of lackluster uh, incidents. I'm always kind of bad at Bomberman games. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, uh, yeah I, it's, I've it's always kind of like flip-flopped on how I play these because I, I grew up with the N64 Bomberman games, which mm. since they're in 3D, there's not really that much of a worry about blowing yourself up, so I'll have times when I play these, I just get myself stuck in the corner, because I just don't know how to play these. And then other times, it's, you get a little more self-aware. I, I can't compre comprehend uh, two dimensions. <laughs> well, in these games, it's very easy to box yourself in with a bomb, and if that happens, just uh, start writing your will out now, because you're, you're not getting out of this alive. Yeah, pretty much. Um, the one thing I will say in regards to Bomberman DS, though, is that it does play with its own arrangements of music that are completely new and unique to this game. So, unlike the very first remake of uh, Bomberman 1, none of the traditional Bomberman themes actually play, with the exception of for multiplayer. So, to some people, that nostalgia will ruin this game, and quite frankly, if that's the case, I honestly think this is a game a lot of people need to give a chance, because yes, it's got the motion control, like, it's got the touch screen control for your inventory on the bottom screen, but that comes in handy later down the track, I feel, and it um, makes things a little more forgiving. I, 
Uh, the other thing you've got to be very aware of with this game, don't ever hit the exit. Because if you do, extra enemies spawn, and they home in on you, and it is painful. Yeah, I think uh, this is the case with a lot of classic Bomb Man style games like this. If you hit the exit, it's kind of a bad thing, but at least it doesn't destroy itself, because that'd mm. be a problem. Can I, um, I don't play Bomberman games very often. Um, is there bonuses for clearing out all the squares on the map? Um, honestly, just extra points. The main thing is that sometimes blocks will have power-up cards in them and sometimes they won't. There are uh, power-ups that will allow you to see throughout the, the stage where any hidden cards are. But again, I'm trying to go as minimalistic on my inventory as I go, so I'm just destroying blocks to get more score so that I can max out my life count as quickly as possible. Because in the long run, it's going to help. A lot. Yeah, because later levels do get really difficult, and that goes for pretty much any Bomberman game. The biggest thing, though, about this is that you really just have to worry about killing enemies. Mm. In fact, I just collected the item I was thinking of. Okay. I was just kidding. Like I said, I don't play Bomberman games very often. Fair enough. I think the only yeah, one you I... just got that item you were talking about before, like the, the glasses. I imagine that's what you use to see through the blocks. Correct, yeah. And the one thing I also try to do quite a lot throughout this playthrough is at least give each of the cards a little bit of screen time. Even though some of them I actively choose not to use. Like, Bomb Kick is a very, very, um... Oh, yeah, Bomb Kick is weird. Oh. Bomb Kick is weird, but it's also a really strong trademark of the Bomberman series, is just run into a bomb, kick it across the screen. A lot of the power-ups, especially in Bomberman DS, only last for one stage. So the only things that really carry across are your flame, your speed, and your bomb count. Uh, but stuff like Bomb Kick, I believe, is only for one stage, and some of the things that go into the bottom four square on the bottom left of the bottom screen are just temporary power-ups that last for a bit of the stage. Yeah, that's fair. A lot of traditional Bomb Man games are pretty much in the same realm, where it's usually just your stackables, like the bomb and the firepower you usually get to keep. Hmm. Boom! You, you essentially, you're just powering up Bomberman throughout these stages here. Yeah. Pretty much. His blasts are getting bigger, he can place down more, and that's pretty much it. For the most part, yeah. Yeah. I mean, more ground. occasionally I'll get a really good card for a really good ability, and I'll be like, oh yes, I love showing this off, and I will do exactly that. Yeah, like you just got one of them now. Penetration Bomb, one of my absolute favorite power-ups. This is really good and also uh, really bad if you've trapped yourself <laughs> in a bad way. Yeah, yeah, it makes multiplayer incredibly dangerous. Oh yeah, there are plenty of deaths that happen using this Spike Bomb type. Oh my goodness. And I will admit, it also makes accidentally hitting the, um, the goal very easy. Especially yeah. if you're in a very tightly wound area. Well, also accidentally hitting yourself very easy too, because if you forget that the blue fire goes through every block and you walk into the path, well, that's embarrassing. I've done that on occasions. Mm hmm. Yeah. I will admit to that as well. <laughs> now, when did Hudson Soft go out of business? Um. It was like mid 2010s, I believe, somewhere around that realm. One I of the last so, games yeah. was on Xbox Live Arcade. Yeah, because the multiplayer for the DS games was released as DSiWare. Then they made a uh, an Xbox Live Arcade upscaled version of it, and then that was the last Hudson Soft uh, released Bomberman game. And I think also the last Hudson Soft licensed game that was released. So that sounds about right. So sad, I like Hudson Soft. Yeah, I think it's just like the tone shift of a lot of games. It didn't really help Hudson kind of survive, because when they tried to make Bomberman dark and edgy, it failed horribly. And keeping the cutesy nature of Bomberman, it, it wasn't a thing that really was in people's interest at that time, so it didn't help. Oh yeah, Act Zero was terrible. Yeah, Bomberman was always a party multiplayer game. You know, and 
the, the, then they tried to do t- drastic change. I, it was around that time that a lot of games did that, and you're just like, yeah. Oh. Bomberman suffered the worst with that, in honest opinion, because a lot of modes in Axio just didn't even play like traditional Bomberman, which didn't help it either. So after every five stages, we go to a bonus stage. You are in completely invincible, have to kill all of those enemies that normally come out of end goals if you hit it. And then when that clears through, then you get access to the top screen where all the power cards are. The great thing is, if an explosion from a bomb hits you, you can place a bomb immediately and basically run around with a flame chasing you. And especially if I ever finish with extra time, I love just running around all over the place with just a flame chasing me. (laughs) But that means I've filled in a lot of gaps in my inventory of abilities that I didn't already have. Which means now I get a good chance to start showing things off. Which I absolutely love. Can't just say those bonuses, man, those look broken beyond belief because of the invincibility. Oh, absolutely. They're a good breather after a solid five stages, and later on, they can actually be a very comforting thing if you're if, for example, you're running low on power-ups, because it's been a long time since I haven't done a full run start to finish, but I believe if you're not running too great on power-ups, there's no other real way to replenish it. So, like, I'm very conservative with things, but if you spam power-ups constantly and die frequently, they can be incredibly helpful. Yeah, because that's the one weird quirk about this game, having a power-up system that for the most part doesn't stay in between levels. So you have a finite number of powers that you have to keep track of. Definitely. And like... Oh, look, Dragon Quest slime. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Yeah, and also it kind of looks like the Chow robot from Sonic Adventure 2. If you're playing yeah. Chow for the multiplayer mech stages. Yeah, a little bit. I can see that. <laughs> There we go. I got him. Yeah, this is one of those cases where having extended fire is a good thing. Oh, absolutely. Now with this oil drum, we'll just stop moving. And now he has to think what he's done. Alright. Robot Hell is a real place that you will be sent if you get between Bomber Man and a wall. <laughs> Blow up. Pretty much. Bomberman is basically the best uh, bomb disposable dis- disposal unit you can have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. Oh, you got the kick. Yeah, rip that fire, though. That's one thing I haven't mentioned yet in this playthrough. If you have a bomb explode on a power-up, it destroys the power-up. Definitely more punishing if you have, like, bomb kick and that happens by accident, which is very easy to do. Yes. Because the annoying thing is when a bomb is in transit, if it runs over a power-up card, it does destroy it, even before it explodes. Yeah, and there's nothing you can do if it happens. <laughs> Those moments- And also, can I say, because you also got the grab power, grab and bomb kick is the worst combination, because you oh can't boy. pick up oh the bombs boy. when you kick them. Nope. You only get one chance to lift the bombs, which is when they're on the same square as you. Yeah, and it's like such a precise timing thing too. I think you have to like do it in between frames of Bomberman getting ready to kick. So you have little to no time to grab it. Hmm. I always actively avoid bomb kick. It's just not really my thing. I like bomb grab more. Yeah. And that's when you pick, up, pick it up. And you can also throw bombs over walls, which will go to the other side of the screen because it will screen wrap. I will say the really neat thing about Bomberman DS is that it has both the bomb punch ability and the, the power glove, which means you've got the option to either throw it from the square where you drop it, or the option to punch it from a square behind, which is pretty neat. That's really good. In fact, I'm actually going into this next stage with bomb punch. And glasses. Now, you can see partially why I haven't been using it all the glasses all too much is that it does kind of hurt the eyes with how flashy it gets. Yeah, I I can see this being a problem. Yes, it does mean you can cut down on your amount of block destruction to try and find items, but it does cut, like, especially on a tiny DS screen, it is very straining. 
I think it's also a little distracting too because it's rapidly flashing the stuff, so it makes me think sometimes that wall is gone. You just get the power, but the wall's still there. I will. I will admit I have had that problem before as well. Am I gonna do the dumb, or am I actually? Yeah, I'm actually gonna work around it. So. There we go. <laughs> yeah, a little <laughs> close on the timing. Oh, that was a little nerve wracking. Also, gotta love how they introduce the digger enemies who throw bomb, who throw your bombs if they run into them, but they box in between blocks and the walls, so I can easily just destroy them from over here. Oh my gosh! But no, because he's off screen, doesn't count. Does he have two health? I can never remember with those guys. Well, I, I, it might actually be one, because it looked like the first bomb, it, it didn't work because he was off screen. True. Or he may have just thrown so, them all away, so... Possibly, yeah. There's also that. Every five stages, we get a bonus stage. And then after we do stage 1-9, we'll be going on to our first boss. So, if you've played any of the Bomberman World games on SNES, or, again, if you've played the... TurboGrafx-16 remake of Bomberman 1, or if you've played uh, Bomberman 93 or 94, same kind of setup. 10 stages, 10th stage is the boss. I think it's somewhat the same for like the GBA games too. A little bit, yeah. Bomberman Max does follow a similar sort of setup. Whoa! Yeah, wrong way to hold the shield, that was a little close. <laughs> to bring my bomb shield and I don't even face in the right direction. <laughs> That is the tricky thing about Bomb Shield, is if you're not facing the right way, it does next to nothing. I guess you flashbacks of trying to do, like, bomb glitching in, like, Ocarina of a Door, like you try to do a mecha flip, but you face the wrong way by accident. <laughs> then just, yep, that that's a problem. Just one side roll and you're dead. Yeah. Those digger enemies. He's like, I'm gonna get that bomb! That did not go the way I planned. Ah, it was. Yeah, you would think he would run into it, but nah, I got a little ignorant. Oh, he was right. Yeah, the AI of them, the, yeah, their AI is actually a little bit more clever, which is... Helps build the challenge, I suppose. Yeah, and you were right from earlier, it is two hits, so you can still hurt things when it's off screen. It's hard to tell if you do damage if it's off screen or not, because I know in earlier Bomberman games, I... It, it didn't really, like, off screen anything so it's really hard to gauge if that would be an issue or not especially in nes bomberman 1 and 2 it doesn't any scrolled off screen damage does sort of depend on sprite permanence anyways thankfully they give us an option to kit ourselves out before the first boss so if there's anything you want to go in with do so and I usually make sure that I always go in with remote bombs. Yeah, that's a good idea. Remote bomb is one of the easiest setup things for Bomberman, and in a boss fight, that's almost required. Oh, absolutely. It makes things more efficient, it makes boss patterns easier to work around, and it also means I minimize the fluffing as much as possible. Uh, and if you've played any Bomberman game, a lot of the bosses are fairly tropey compared to other titles, so usually there are themes that are followed with these bosses. In fact, I think actually Super Bomberman follows a similar pattern on its first boss of having something plant themed that drops flowers and then there is a bigger flower underneath it after you kill the enemies. So it's just a case of, pun not intended, weeding out the small folk. <laughs> Not gonna lie, this thing looks like a pile of junk in the air. Not weeds. Alright. Oh no. And then that happens. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Oops. I got a little bit too overzealous with that one. That's why you have six lives. Pretty much. And once the boss actually starts attacking himself, that is when dodging a lot of the patterns does get a bit difficult. Again, the joys of remote bombs. But unfortunately, because you did die, you do have a little bit of a nerf now in your bombs, because now they don't seem to have the same explosion radius. 
because you lost the fire. Thankfully, when the boss isn't spitting out enemies, he does still take damage. So even if he throws a couple of enemies on the screen, they're not going to be your main focus. The boss will still take damage, and that does make life a little bit easier. But again, first boss, so not too much of a problem. Yay, power-ups. You only have, like, six seconds to get all these. You're not getting many. Yeah, that's it for World 1. <laughs>